for a student to use the my set call online portal he has to register first to register as a student on the my set call portal he has to go to my set call.co.za my set call.co.za select academic set call online register Yes, the instructions on the left hand side. You can read that if you want. If you also read at the bottom, you'll see that the password you create must be eight characters long. And in the password, there must be number, a number, at least one number, one uppercase uh, letter, and one lowercase letter. Obviously, if you just use one of each, your password will only be three characters long. So you must use more than three characters yet must be in total eight characters long to create the password the one-time pin is a sms that will be sent to your phone with a code in it and that code is what you will enter into this field to verify that the phone really belongs to you so to start you enter your student number here then you enter your cell phone number this cell phone number that you enter here must be the cell phone number that is registered on this college system. The day that you registered at the, as a student at the college, that cell phone number is the cell phone number that you must use here. If you cannot, if it doesn't allow, or it, if it doesn't send you the OTP or the PIN, it means that the cell phone number that you are using is not the one that is captured on the system. And you'll have to speak to your lecturer or your HOD to fix this on the system. And only then will you be able to register on the online portal. But let's assume everything is correct. You entered your student number and you've entered your cell phone number. Then you say, send OTP code to my cell phone. When you click on this button, it will send you that SMS. And in that SMS, there will be a code that you enter into this field. Once you've entered the code into this field, you are asked, required to enter your password. I suggest that you first write down your password on a piece of paper and then just type it into this field. Because you cannot see this value, you have to remember what you've typed in. That is why you need to confirm your password. And then you say, save password. Once you've saved your password, you are ready to log on to the set call online portal for students if you forget your password in the future you will come back to this section and recreate a new password that you'll use in the set call online student portal the next phase that you go to is to go to the student portal you go to academic set call online student enter your student number your cell phone number and your password. For the demonstration purposes, I've created my own shortlist where it'll put in the student number, the cell phone number, and then I capture the password. Then I log in. Once I've logged in, I'm required to join a class. Only classes that you are officially registered for will be listed in this section. You select the year, 2020, the exam month. Because we're working with, my example includes engineering, I'm going to go to 04E. 04 means the month in which the exam will be written. If you look at 08, that means that the engineering people are going to be writing an exam in August. And the next exam they will be writing in November, month 11. And the last letter, the E, stands for engineering. 06 means that the business study students will be writing in uh, September, month 6. And they will be writing in November. The B stands for business studies. The third group that is using the online portal is the NCV students. And they only write exams in November. That's why it is 11N. Then I select the period. In this example, 
I'm only registered for one period, and only that periods for which I'm uh, registered will appear in this list. So I select uh, lesson A, period A. There will be the, my lecturer's name, the subjects that I'm enrolled for, and then my name. Then I can select the lessons. The lecturer prepares the lessons in a specific sequence. Usually they start from lesson one, lesson two, and lesson three. So the oldest lesson will appear at the bottom, and the most recent lesson will appear at the top. In my lesson demonstration, I'm just going to use lesson one. If I select lesson one, uh, you will see the date that this lesson was released. The next column um, contains classroom information, and the right column contains important dates. The next row is the communication row between the student, the lecturer, and the class. If the lecturer wants to send you specifically a notice, the notice will appear in lecture message to students. This message can only be seen by you. No other student can see this message, except when the, student, the lecturer is sending the same message to all the students. But usually, he will just send one student a message in this box. For example, he can tell you that you have not submitted your previous assignment, and that will only be relevant to you and not to other students. This button here is where you can email. If you don't want to uh, post your message on the notice board and you want to keep that private, you can send an email to the lecturer. The next section is where you can post on the notice board. You can write something here. I'm just going to say hi. And if you post it, it immediately appears on the notice board. On the notice board, you will see the person who has posted the message. Then you'll see the message, and then you'll see the time that this message was posted on the notice board. The next section shows you if there was is an assignment attached to the specific lesson. If the the button, the checkbox is ticked, it means that there's assignment that you have to complete. And then it tells you when the assignment must be completed. When it says the 9th, it means before 12 o'clock on the 9th of April, that night, midnight, you must have uploaded this assignment. One minute past midnight, the system will not accept your assignment. You have to prepare the assignment electronically. If you've written the assignment, you have to convert it into an electronic format by one way or another so that you can upload it. Usually what you do is you scan the document and then you submit it as a PDF file. Once it's on the system, you can choose the file by selecting this button. Then you've got an assignment version. There's a version A and a version B. At the moment, the system allows you to upload the same assignment twice. Say, for example, you upload the assignment tonight, two days before the closing date of the assignment. But after you've uploaded the assignment, you realize that there's some missing information. Then you are allowed to upload that assignment once more which will be version B. But if you still have a mistake with it, you cannot upload a third version. So please be careful and make sure that your work is complete before uploading the assignment for evaluation. The lecturer will then receive this assignment and he will uh, mark it and he will give you feedback. When you open this lesson again, at the bottom you will see the score that the lecturer has given you and then the remark pertaining to that assignment. If you want to, and if the lecturer has uploaded the script, you can then click on this button and you can download the PDF file that the lecturer has marked. So you can see the comments he's made on the actual document. 
on the right hand side the lesson that you are going to do for today or this particular lesson that you have selected will include the lesson topic then it will include the lesson body or the instructions and below the lesson instructions or the lesson introduction will be the supporting documents the supporting documents will lie in a specific sequence one two three four this sequence is also the sequence in which the lecturer wants you to view the specific documents you should open them in this specific uh, sequence because according to the lecturer that will make sense for you to understand the lesson if you look on the right hand side of the supporting document you'll see url file and download if you look at url you'll see there's two colors a black and blue when the view is written in black it means that there is no URL attached to the specific resource if it is written in blue it means that there is a URL attached to this resource if I for example open click on the view it will take me to the YouTube file which the lecturer wanted you to see. To understand what real numbers are If you look on the file column, you'll see it's got a minus and it's got a Y. If it's got a Y, it means that there's a file that you can download. If it's got a minus, it means that there is no file to download. If um, we go to the first one and I say get, you'll notice that it's downloading the lesson. I can then open the lesson and I can read the lesson so that I have an understanding of the topic. That includes my uh, topic on student online portal.